High fasting blood sugar is at the center of type 2 diabetes. And while it used to be thought that diabetes was a progressive disease that could only be managed with medication, we now know that reversal and remission is possible. More and more people are lowering their fasting blood sugar with diet and lifestyle changes and getting off their diabetes medication entirely. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you the four step method that I use with clients to do just that. Now, I really wanna make it clear before we get into the video that you need to talk to your doctor before you start going through these steps because when done correctly, your need for insulin or other blood sugar lowering medications will decrease rapidly. So you need to be monitoring your blood sugar and working with your doctor to adjust your medication accordingly. The first step is to focus on whole foods. This means unprocessed vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds, proteins, and fats. The reason fasting insulin becomes elevated in the first place is because the cells in our body become resistant to insulin. Insulin is the hormone responsible for telling our cells to take in excess sugar from our blood. When we first become insulin resistant, which is 10 to 15 years before it progresses to type two diabetes, our bodies just pump out more insulin and this is enough to keep our fasting blood sugar in check. But as time goes on and more and more insulin is being pumped out, eventually it can't keep up. This is when we start to see our fasting blood sugar rise and we'll be diagnosed with prediabetes and then type two diabetes. Now we lower our fasting blood sugar by improving our body's sensitivity to insulin. And we do this by reducing our need for insulin so our bodies create less. Now in most cases, processed food requires more insulin to process. So if we focus our diets on whole foods instead, this is a key step in lowering our fasting blood sugar and reversing type two diabetes. Step number two is to eat low carb when possible. This comes back to reducing our need for insulin because foods high in carbohydrates require the most insulin to process. So reducing them and choosing lower carb options when possible can have a huge impact. And I'll just make one quick note here because I get this question a lot. As your insulin sensitivity improves and as you start to reverse insulin resistance, your tolerance for carbs increases. You're going to be able to tolerate them better as you begin to heal. Step number three is to be smart about carbs. Now you don't need to cut carbs entirely out of your diet. Yes, reducing them is a very effective strategy, but I understand that not all people are able to do that or really want to. So when you do have higher carb foods, there are a couple things you can do to be smarter about them. For starters, limit them in your first meal of the day and try to have them with your second or third meal instead. And when you do eat them, make sure you're also eating them with foods rich in protein and fat. This slows down the digestion of the carbohydrates and will reduce the blood sugar and insulin spike. And third, you can take apple cider vinegar diluted in water or berberine before your meals. Number four is to have protein at the center of every meal. Protein needs to be the focus. Too often I see people under consuming protein or eating the wrong types of protein. And this is a large reason why they struggle to bring their fasting blood sugar down. Protein is needed for proper hormone function, for maintaining lean muscle mass, and for reducing insulin. And if you are someone who struggles with cravings in between meals, increasing your protein intake is going to be a game changer. Try to eat a minimum of 30 grams of protein, ideally from animal sources, at every meal. One of the best ways I make sure I'm getting the best quality meat to meet my protein needs is with butcher crab. Butcher crab brings ethically sourced meat and seafood straight to your door across Australia. All of their beef and lamb is 100% grass fed and finished. Their pork and chicken is pasture raised and their seafood is wild caught. They have a wide range of boxes to choose from and also the option to customize your own. You can change up your box or pause or cancel your subscription at any time. So you don't have to worry about being locked in. Click the link in the description box down below to check them out and to build your box. And when you're at checkout, make sure to use code HCK15 because that will save you 15%. And finally, step number five is to try intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is when you cycle between periods of fasting and eating. 
Usually for those people who are just getting started, I recommend aiming for 12 hours of fasting every day. So this means if you finish your last meal in the evening at 7 p.m., don't eat again until 7 a.m. And I think that's really achievable for a lot of people. If you can push this out to 13, 14, 15, maybe even 16 hours of fasting, you're going to have really good results. But like I said at the start, please make sure you are working with your doctor to adjust your medication as needed because when you're fasting especially, your need for it is going to reduce drastically. And one final note, Fasting isn't about eating less overall. You still want to be meeting your energy needs within that feeding window. The reason that fasting is beneficial is because this is when your insulin is lowest and you really want to prolong that state of low insulin because that is when your cells are going to become sensitive to it once again. Anyways, guys, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section down below if you knew that diabetes was reversible or is this news to you? Let me know down below. I love chatting with you guys in the comment section. And before you go, if you're in Australia, make sure to check out Butcher Crowd. Once again, that link will be down below. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.